sure. Man, I don't, why does it always take a second for me to pop in? Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 26 of the Rocket Punch Show. I'm one of your hosts, as always, Cameron, and joining me, as he usually does, is the Dark Lord of Hype himself, Darth Turner, a.k.a. Seth. Um, Seth, what's good in the hood, sir? Uh, okay, so first off, I gotta, I, got, I, I have two things that I need to talk about real quick, all right? Okay. Cold open to the show. Uh, first off, as you can see... I have completely Halloween themed everything. We are we are officially in Halloween zone. I am. We're getting close to that. We're getting no. We're already there, dude. The whole month of October is Halloween, just like the whole two months of November and December are Christmas, right? So yes. uh, don't at me. Um, so I got my I got my star shirt right here. We're gonna be doing spooky stuff. If uh, if you know what my backdrop is from, you will know that I am been playing a ton of phasmophobia which i will definitely be talking about at some point oh that is what that's from okay truck this is the truck from phasmophobia okay now it all makes sense to me i'm over here hunting ghosts i'm hunting ghosts uh i got the the ekg no that's ecg (laughs) ekg (laughs) is the one to check your pulse to see if you're alive that is Um, correct so i got the ecg meters i got the motion detector dude it's it's real good so that's the fun thing the sec- okay, sorry, I gotta get serious here for a minute oh, because okay. I right. was having dinner right before this, okay? Okay. And this family of about seven folks walked up to eat. I was eating a mellow mushroom. Uh, as always, I sit on the patio. I do not sit okay. inside because you're insane if you sit inside. And, you know, I'm chilling here, wearing my mask and whatnot, and this family in front of me, not a single mask on their face, right? So this whole exchange, and I'm a regular there, so like the, you know, the people there are like, oh my God, like we just need to get Seth seated, right? So the, this, this whole exchange was going down, right? And this family did not have masks and we're going on about this, whatever. And the words that came out of their mouth were, you know, we just didn't think about it. It's, it's not like one of those things like your phone or your keys, so do you have some that we could get? And I just wanted to take a moment. I, I, in my brain, I was like, you know what? I'm on a podcast every night or every <laughs> Sunday night. I'm the type of person, like, I don't know how many people listen to this show, but, I, you know, if it's just one person, let me go ahead and say that wearing a mask is now equal to carrying your phone, your keys, and your wallet. It is a part of your going out kit right now i'm not gonna say like at the end of the day you should probably advise against going out however i also believe you know it's all risk variables right so like every you know think of everything on a spectrum of risk right yeah. so like it's risky for me to go out and eat but i don't consider it as risky to sit on the patio so i'm comfortable doing that if you don't feel comfortable doing that that's okay what i am saying here is masks are mandatory even if your state doesn't have a like a, a a thing in in place like an order in place you still need to wear it this is not going to get better until people start wearing masks and don't this isn't a political thing this isn't a a religious thing this is this is just facts this is just science and facts you should be wearing a mask science. and your mask like you if you go to a bar without your wallet you're not going to get service right because you have no means to pay for it True. Just like if you go somewhere, don't surprise Pikachu face me when literally the manager comes out and says, sorry, without a mask, you can't come in. Like that in, in Alabama, there is a mask order in place. And I'm so glad that it's there. And I hope that it continues on into the future because surprise, all of our neighboring states don't have one and are doing a lot worse than we are. So this mm. is not a this is not, I, uh, detach yourself from political opinions. Detach yourself from everything. This is just cold, hard scientific facts. Thank you very much for so, this pub- public service announcement here from Rock. That's Pants. the end of my <laughs> rant because I really wanted to look at, like I you know I'm not going to do this because all it's going to do is just take a shit and like blow up right here on this mellow mushroom patio and I don't want that. Yeah. But like I wanted to turn to them and be like, no, it is like. It is Although, as important as your wallet. That would have been as important. That would have been hilarious story to come into the podcast. Like, where is Seth at? Well, Seth is late because he got into a fight with a family of seven at the local Mellow Mushroom Pizza. Listen, <laughs> listen, and don't and you know don't even be like, don't even be like, uh, you know, they got the little small kids and they're like, oh, the small kid. No, l- listen, if your child is like, if they can walk, they can wear a mask, right? Like that's, it's. Anyways, man, I just. 
Sorry, I just had to go on that for a bit because, you know, these poor uh, hostesses are there. They're trying to help, right? And the manager's having to come out and do all this. And then, you know, they all feel weird because they know me by name. They know my order by heart. And so they're like, I'm being patient, but like, you know, I'm also there with my mask. So it's like, they're like, we're going to go ahead and seat him. So anyways, now wear your fucking masks. <laughs> End PSA. I'm done. Now, the, the, the more important question here before we actually get started into the show proper, since you've brought it up, Seth, mm -hmm. what is your order? What is your regular order over Listen. at um, mushroom, uh, Mellow Mushroom? Blah, blah, blah. Mellow Mushroom regular order. Small pepperoni and sausage pizza with a side order of beer cheese. Life, life hack pro tip mega. Here you go. So the beer cheese is $2.50 to purchase just by itself. The... Wow, really? If you, yeah. If, so if you get it, like it's it's part of the like pretzel bites, which are seven dollars and fifty cents. So you're basically paying five dollars for chopped up bread. <laughs> Don't do that. Just get your pizza and take the crust and dip that shit in the cheese dip, right? So you get like the pizza itself. Then you dip the crust in there. I can tell you it is nine hundred and sixty calories exactly because I'm doing calorie counting and all that stuff. So Good, regular okay. order: small pepperoni and sausage pizza with a side order of beer cheese will perfectly fill me up because I'm doing a two meals a day thing right now to, to, to try and like lower my weight. Okay. Um, so it's kind of like I have like 2,300 calories across two meals and that's like 960 calories. So it's like good, clean, almost a thousand. I love it. Chef's kiss. Okay. Okay. Well, hopefully that everything on that end works out for you, man. Yep. Side for you. Oh, it has. I'm <laughs> dude. I, I want you to know this Cameron. So for those of you who are just joining, I know this is, an, this is a video game podcast. I promise we're going to get to video games. But <laughs> I also think that folks tune in like to folks that tune in like to learn a little bit about us. So uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. growing up, um, Cameron, you know this about me, but I was a pretty heavy dude. I, I sat around 275 pounds through most of my like high school and college career. After college, I moved to St. Louis and lived there for a year where I lived downtown. So I did a lot of walking around. My uh, my first job was about 14 blocks from where I lived. I was on the 12th story. So I did like the, I'm going to walk down the stairs, walk to work, and then come home and walk up 12 flights of stairs. So like, yeah, basically during that time, Smart. I, yeah, during that time, I started to do a little <clears throat> bit of calorie counting and got down to about 180, uh, sorry, 196 pounds. Sorry, 194 pounds lowest i've ever been since puberty very good so then i uh moved back to decatur or moved back to huntsville and kind of snuck back up to 230 pounds uh specifically when i was working at my previous job was a place that offered lunch so we always had a joke that's like oh you're gonna put on your and i don't care talking about it here it was i worked at curse so it's like you're gonna put on your curse 30 <laughs> and uh, and so, yeah, that's exactly what happened is I put on about 30 pounds. So I was up to about 230. Well, anyways, I'm back down. I ranked in at 198.2. Very good. Morning. That's so, awesome, dude. That getting it under good. control. Man, can you just imagine how, how much weight I would lose if I just ate vegetables? Could you imagine I'm how much weight I could lose if I ate just vegetables? But that is a well, horrible... No, no, I'm just saying, in general, just eating the vegetable. I just <laughs> That's don't a eat horrible vegetable. life. And I don't wish that on my worst enemy. By so any anyway, stretch of the imagination. I'm doing pretty good. I'm the healthiest that I've ever been. It's good. Halloween. It's next-gen consoles. I'm ready, dude. It bring, give it to me. I'm ready, Cameron. Good. I'm ready. I'm glad you're ready, and I hope everybody else is ready, because we've got a bunch of stuff to talk about for you guys tonight here. We're going to talk about GameStop and Microsoft teaming up. We're going to talk about PlayStation 5 showing us the inside of the... Uh, PlayStation showing us the inside of the PS5. We're going to be talking about backwards compatibility and a whole lot more, guys, because this is the Rocket Punch Show, uh, your southern source for all things gaming, geek, and more. You can listen to us every Tuesday on your podcast service of choice. You can also listen to us live as we record the show each and every Sunday at twitch.tv slash Rocket Punch Live around 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, as always, want to give a special shout out to everybody tuning in via Twitch, joining us in our conversations, having fun with us tonight. Guys, if you want to know uh, more about all the stuff that I make for you, you can head over to rocketpunchgo.com. That is your one-stop shop for all the videos, podcasts, streams, and more right at your fingertips. 
Um, if you want to be a part of the Rock Punch family, you can easily do so by joining our Discord uh, ch server there. That way you can talk to us when we're not in front of your face on the microphones um, each week there. We have a lot of fun, play games, goof off, all that good stuff there. Um, if you want to help support Rock Punch, there are a lot of different ways you can do that. The easiest ways to do that, of course, is reviewing the podcast on your audio service of choice, wherever you're listening to this at. Uh, you can also follow and share our content over on social media, of course. at the If you're watching via video, I am at Rocket Punch Go. Seth is at Darth Turner over on Twitter. You guys can follow us there, uh, share all the stuff, all the content we create, we usually share over there. So if you're following us there, you will not miss a thing, we promise. Um, if you want to go even further beyond, though, guys, you can easily do so by becoming a subscriber here on Twitch. If you do that, you'll get access to exclusive emotes here on the Twitch channel, as well as exclusive access to the post show, at, which we do after uh, this episode, each Rocket Punch Show episode. And that is exclusive only to Twitch subscribers, as well as patrons. Um, if you can also become a patron over at patreon.com slash rocket punch, find out how you can help support the show and all the awesome endeavors that I do for you guys each and every day. Um, speaking of Patreon, I want to give a special shout out to our Rocket Punch producers. Uh, these are the people supporting us at the highest tier over on patreon.com slash rocket punch. A special thank you to Jossie M, Jeremy M, Stephen S, Adam C, and of course everyone subscribe to us here on twitch.tv slash rocket punch live. Um, I actually don't talk about this segment very often, but unfortunately it's at the point now where we are... It's this is this is the the rush. This is the holiday rush um, that we do here. So I've actually got some upcoming events and announcements. I'll run through you guys real fast here. Uh, stream schedule. Um, I'm working now that I actually have my camera back. Um, I have. I'm pretty sure that I, well, I'll be able to do a consistent stream schedule for you guys here. Um, so moving forward here, stream schedule is going to be Wednesdays and Thursdays around 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, Saturday afternoons around 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. And then um, on that Saturday stream, I'll probably start leaning more towards doing retro games or older style games there. And then Sunday, of course, is at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll be right here streaming the Rocket Punch show and a whole lot more. Um, you also want to make sure to follow us over on YouTube. Uh, we'll have I'll have videos up on that one. Um, I'm still working on exactly how that schedule is going to go. Um, just if you subscribe over there, you'll be able to find the new videos as soon as they pop up for you guys. Um, ooh, I've got, speaking of YouTube, uh, are going to start putting up some YouTube videos up on youtube.com slash rocket punch go. So if you want to check out some of the videos that I add kind of supplementary to our um, streams and everything else here, uh, definitely swing over to YouTube, and check that out. Also have a, a cool idea that I'm going to, I think I'm going to do with, um, the GG app, which we talked about the post show a couple of episodes back. Um, stay tuned for that. Follow us on Twitter and, um, you, you'll, you'll see what I'm going to be doing with that. Uh, but the big one scheduled events. So like I said, this is basically, this is the busy part of the year of this at the end of the year, all these events we usually plan and do here. I've actually got, let me switch over here. Hopefully. Yes. Okay. There's a promo there. I've got the outlook here for rocket punch, um, and kind of the stuff I have planned, for the remainder of the year, all the big events and stuff going on here, guys. So if you look there, um, October, we've got Hollow Week. That is our spooky streams week where we stream a bunch of games, uh, give away a couple of prizes and stuff on that one. Uh, that's going to be near the end of the month around the Halloween time frame. Right now, that those dates are the 26th through the 30th. So uh, be sure to follow us here on twitch.tv slash Rocket Punch Live if you want to see those streams there. And kind of looking ahead, guys, in November, of course... We've got the Extra Life stream. I'm already cooking and planning a couple of things um, for Extra Life this year. So get excited for that. Um, it's going to be a little bit different with it just me by myself. But, hey, you know, hey, got to do what you got to do. But we'll, we'll have some fun. We'll have some special guests and stuff. I'm uh, still looking to see if anybody else wants to help participate. So stay tuned for more information on Extra Life. As well as there's another event that is redacted in November. I'm not ready to talk about it yet because it's still in early stages. Um, of being created, but when it is time to reveal that, I will definitely reveal that on my social media outlets. Uh, looking over to December, um, I am a little weirded out that it is, uh, the beginning of December will be the five-year anniversary stream of Rocket Punch. Rocket Punch will be five years old in December, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, we'll probably do a stream, give some prizes away, um, a whole bunch of other fun stuff there. 
Um, and also, another event I've got planned for December that is also redacted. Again, that's in early stages, but when I'm ready to talk about it, I definitely will. And then finally, in early January, it will be time for Game of the Year 2020. Um, always a big fun time for us to discuss the latest gaming from the past year. Um, I've got some early ideas sketched out on what I want to do for that. So definitely stay tuned and we'll, um, as we get closer to January, we'll talk more about that there. But that is, those are the events that I've got planned up for you guys here uh, moving forward for the rest of the year. Uh, remember, follow me on social media at Rock Punch Go. Um, that way you'll know when those events are going to go live and what they detail um, as I get everything kind of finalized and get the I's dotted for those. Woo, that was a lot. I think that, that was, was a lot. That, that was a it's a busy of time of year. It is. And, you know, it's one of those times where you, we got to get ahead. I got to jump ahead and get ready for this. Here, yeah, so. exactly. So we're done talking about upcoming events and announcements here, guys. Now let's start talking about the news from the past week. Um, for all the visual people, there's a lot of video attached with all the stuff we're going to be talking about today. So unfortunately, the first one is not in it. There's no video for this. You know, I couldn't find a cool one for it. But first up on the docket here, Microsoft and GameStop are fusion dancing doing something here or patara earring whichever one you want to pick there and announcing a multi-year strategic partnership here this is the official press release from gamestop.com going to read the first paragraph or two um gamestop corporation today announced it has entered into a multi-year strategic partnership agreement with microsoft corporation further advancing its strategy to expand its physical and digital video game offerings as well as enhance the company's retail technology infrastructure. With more with over 5,000 plus retail stores worldwide and its world-class e-commerce platform, GameStop leverages its vast customer network, power-up rewards, and omni-channel capabilities to deliver enhanced gaming solutions to its customers. Through this partnership, GameStop will standardize the company's business operations on Microsoft's cloud solutions and hardware products to deliver rich, new digital experiences to customers, creating the ultimate gaming destination for gamers and its vision to be the premier omni-channel customer access point for video game products. The partnership includes enterprise and commercial elements. Under this agreement, GameStop will standardize its back-end and in-store solutions on Dynamics 365. Microsoft's portfolio of cloud-based business applications and customer data platform empowering associates with integrated experiences across its business operations, including finance, inventory, e-commerce, retail, and point of sale. This will enable store associates the ability to access omni-channel insights about customer preferences and purchasing history, real-time information on product availability, subscriptions, pricing, and promotions in order to provide a differentiated and personalized in-store customer experience. There is, as you guys can see, a good long more talking about this partnership here with Microsoft, but I digress. I've talked for like the last 10 minutes. Seth, let's hear from you. I picked this one specifically because I know you're my Microsoft guy. You're my Xbox dude. How do you feel about this news? What do you think okay. is going to happen with this? So it's interesting that you you reference me as the Microsoft guy for this one because it, what is actually more of my talents pool for this is being a product designer. It is astonishing. To, do you mean to tell you how I know people are thirsty for news? Sure. Is that this made news. <laughs> so... <laughs> This would be like, I want you, Cameron, I want you to imagine if, if uh, Twitch were to come out and be like, we're, and they already do this, but like, imagine if they posted a blog post where we're like, we're really excited to be partnering with Amazon with uh, our transition to AWS for our servers. Like th mm -hmm. this is what they're, this is basically what they've done is they've made a press release to announce that their back end is going to be a business tool. And... From a product designer perspective, I'm like, oh, that's really cool. That's probably going to enable uh, my, uh, GameStop to do a lot of things that, if you're a frequent GameStop shopper, you've probably <clears throat> seen some weirdness in the way that their business works. For example, if you okay. pre-order a game in store, you put $5 down, the only way that you can manage that pre-order is to go back to that store, right? Um, if that pre-order gets canceled, then the money comes back to you in the form of GameStop credit. And in some and in some cases, if you don't use power up reward 
if you don't have a power up reward account, the only way for you to prove that you have a pre-order is with that actual physical receipt, right? The receipt that fades out in your wallet and is impossible to read. So it's like there's a mm -hmm. lot of like really archaic business practices from a retail perspective, right? So what they did is they basically announced like, hey, we're building a Microsoft backend. They're partnering with Microsoft to build a backend that uh, the word omni-channel, I can't believe that I'm saying the word omni-channel. I feel like I'm <laughs> at work right now. Uh, what that basically means is, um, to put it to put it briefly, some of the most valuable information that, that businesses have is where you interact with them on. And it's surprisingly mm -hmm. difficult to bring that all into one pipeline, right? Uh, and when you create an omni-channel pipeline, that's what you're doing. So Cameron, I would have one customer profile for you. Now, okay. that includes data about what you buy, what you click on on the website, <clears throat> your emails, yeah. right? So like you may open up and click an email about PlayStation 5, and that tells me you're interested in PlayStation 5. Well, if it's not connected back to your profile, then I can't necessarily, like when we're running the PlayStation 5, 5 promo, I can't plop that in the, the header image, right? It's that kind of bullshit. So like, who cares? Like no, gamers don't care about this. So it's very weird to me that this made news quite like it did, like people were talking about it, because well, I don't think, you're not seeing like Microsoft be like, oh, we're partnering to like push to promote the Xbox or like we're going to be doing Xbox activations in store. This is literally like we're running things on Microsoft services well, now. I, I, think, I think the big reason for this is that it was just, um, I think a lot of people just after all the news that Microsoft has kind of rolled out the last couple of mm -hmm. uh, weeks, I think people just saw Microsoft, GameStop, and were like, what? Yeah. Did they buy my, they buy GameStop? And no, then, you no know... No one's going to buy GameStop. They got a lovely educational kind of buff buffer on that. But uh, Rutu yeah. brings... Because I'm glad you brought this up, because Rutu in chat um, says, let's hope it's just a partnership and they didn't buy that sinking ship. So, I, everybody just think... Really critically think about this for a second. What would happen, and would it be bad if Microsoft did buy GameStop? I mean, they've yes. been, apparently they're buying studios, they're buying all sorts of stuff, um, or at least maybe became like a a, 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 a what, 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 what's the word I'm thinking of? Oh my God, a um, primary shareholder, a majority shareholder. Jesus, um, I'm curious. Like, what do you think? I, I don't. Eh. No. No. no, I listen. I am stockholder. I am an investor in all major hardware producers, all three consoles, and both uh, graphics card produ producers. Right? I'm 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 heavily invested in the industry of gaming. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, I just pulled up. I, I'm not invested in GameStop. BT Dub. I just pulled up GameStop's five year uh, growth. Their highest that they've ever been in five years was 2015. That's five years ago. Yeah, that makes sense. So there sense. you go. Uh, it's been a pretty steady downward slope since then, which is interesting because if you look at 2020, 2020 has been the biggest year for gaming ever. Like gaming stocks are doing really well right now because so many people have reinvested their flexible spending into gaming. Mm -hmm. So uh, Microsoft, Nintendo, Sony, uh, even EA and Activision are doing really well right now. But GameStop actually completely flat this year. Didn't move a muscle. Now they are retail, obviously. So like that's all retail I mean, yeah. is down. And it's kind of coming up right now because of next gen consoles. But I mean, earlier this year, they were at like $4 a share. And that 2015 amount was $46 a share. So they're worth about 10% of what they were five years ago, which that is hemorrhaging. <laughs> Not great. So... Long story short, nobody's going to buy GameStop. The only person who would would be a private equity firm that would liquidate it and use the name. But GameStop is about to is about to ascend with Toys R Us into retail heaven. That's for sure. And maybe even they may even hang out with AMC theaters on the way up because <laughs> uh, things aren't looking too great in the theater business either. Well, I, I asked this like then. What what do you think, like, what is the reasoning behind this partnership? Is it just, like, it, I know a lot of people, are, myself included, have talked about, like, dude, GameStop doesn't have a lot much, a lot left in the steam, mm -hmm. in the engine to go on. It, what What is Microsoft's benefit to help 
build help rebuild their back end if in a year Money. or two GameStop just falls flat anyway. Money. I uh, mean, obviously. It's the... Man, this is such a weird thing to get into on our video game podcast, but... Uh, I'll give you just some some rough numbers. So, like, I have worked at, I've worked at companies that do websites that uh, run and manage community sites that that deal with a lot of traffic. Right, running a website for a company as big as GameStop is very expensive. Right, they are spending tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars each year, probably each month actually, mm. just running the site. Mm. Right, and there's a lot about the GameStop shopping experience that is not great. Like for buying video games for a company that only focuses on selling video games it's surprising how bad their setup is for example if you wanted to pre-order an xbox series x or a ps5 to pick it up in the store from the store inventory you had to go to the store the day it it the pre-order started right mm -hmm. i tried to do that i went there about three and a half hours early they were already sold out they put a sticker they literally put a piece of paper on the window that said, here's how many of one we have and here's how many of the other we have, right? It, that is, you compare that to Best Buy, right? Where you go and you say, I want to buy an Xbox One X or Series X. I want it I want it shipped to store. I want to pick it up at my local store and pay my, you know, no shipping and all that stuff. Or I want to have it shipped to my home, right? Like there's, that's kind of stuff yeah. that's just taken for granted, but GameStop doesn't have that. So what they're doing is they're helping GameStop build that. The reason this is news is because GameStop's shares are so bad right now, they'll literally take any piece of good news. And a well, this is called a tech stack, right? It's the, the, the series of technologies that they use to run their company. Yeah. Their tech stack is getting updated with modern tech, right? And that is something that will at least make their site run more, more reliably. They just actually did a huge redesign of their site, uh, GameStop did. Um, they've done three major redesigns of their site in the past five years, so like you can obviously tell they're trying real hard to. Yeah, they're trying to optimize. figure out like what's going to work best. What's the best optimized yeah. format for the consumer? Yeah. And as a designer, that's what I do every day. Actually, I think it would be really fun to work at GameStop right now because they are being so generous with the amount of changes that they're allowing their design team to make, and I think they're good changes, except for mm -hmm. the fact that you removed the ability to get trade-in values from your mobile app. That was dumb. However, I digress. The, the fact is, is that like GameStop knows that it's in a tough situation and they know that if they want gamer, if they want to attract gamers, you've got to be the best place to buy video games. And right now I would say that Amazon, even though it's not targeted toward gamers, Amazon is doing better at selling you products than GameStop is because I can buy something on Amazon. I know it's going to show up exactly the day it comes out. I know that it's going to get to me. Like it's there's just a, a an infrastructure with Amazon that, that GameStop doesn't have, and they're trying mm. to build that right now. That's what this was about. It just was so weird that this this was one of those things that like seeped into like gaming news because of the keywords that were there. And I'm sure if I was running a video game news site, I would love the SEO of having a oh GameStop and Microsoft in one blog post. That'll help us, you know, boost our SEO. But like at the end of the day, I don't think this is a this is nothing that matters to gamers. This is a business, business, business. Well, I hope you guys like business because we're still sticking with that trend here with story number two. Uh, moving on here. Uh, Xbox has a new marketing campaign. And I, again, I, I, I love you to death, Seth. You're a marketing guy. And so I'm definitely eager to hear yep. kind of your thoughts on this here. Let me get rolling here. But... There's a new campaign here I'm reading specifically from Xbox's blog, um, Xbox Wire by Joss Munsey. <clears throat> um, as we approach the launch of a new generation of gaming, there comes a renewed source of joy and inspiration for gamers around the world. We invite you to come on this journey with us to dream of more vibrant and living gaming worlds, to dream of being instantly transported to your games at blazing fast speeds, to dream of discovering your full gaming potential through high visual fidelity and even higher frame rates never experienced on consoles before. With the all-new Xbox family of consoles launching worldwide on November 10th, no matter how ambitious the dream, the power exists to turn your dreams into reality. 
Um, here, if you're watching via video, you guys are seeing the uh, first video they have in their Power Your Dreams uh, campaign leading up to the Series X and Series S launches in November. Um, you should also recognize that uh, lovely young gentleman there. That is Daniel Kaluuya um, from the um, award-winning film Get Out and the uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Um, Seth, what do, you, what do you think about that that initial video you're you you know marketing you're very familiar with it what yes. are your thoughts on this entire campaign so this is this is one of those videos that's not really about telling you like this video doesn't tell you anything about the xbox series s or x it is more this is a brand video right this is to show you that like this is the next generation of xbox uh they mm. the two things that you want to do with an ad like this is you want to include someone famous, check, and you want to make it something that people will talk about, which the fact that it's on the no show notes for tonight, that is also a check, right? It's why Sony does the weird baby advertisements and they're weird, like, you know, <laughs> vertical, vertical waves. Like, they're not trying to do anything to sell you the console. They're trying to make you associate the, the brand name PlayStation with cool shit like and that's what this is right this is a like when you look at this is just a bunch of cool stuff right and i gotta say that the choice of actor for this was very interesting because he has so in my opinion he's so he's so entrenched with his role from get out right and get out was was one of those films that's designed to be unsettling and is designed to there's a lot of like still camera shots like uh, no no spoilers. La, 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 la. No, 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 no spoilers. But I'm talking about cinematography. Okay. Lots of like on your face shots, right? And so one of the things that I think he does really well is he has these eyes that are really expressive and can in that film, you know, that's a that's a spooky movie. So like they they do a really good job of like translating to the audience the terror and horror that he feels throughout the film right it, he has these very just like really iconic eyes right and mm. so there's a scene in this where it's like showing the planet and he's like looking down on it like Sh show me what you got style right <laughs> and his eye is like overlooking this planet and i got this weird like get out vibe of like this is this is weird i don't want this because <laughs> because that that eye shot is so iconic to that film right and so that was a little weird for me but dude this i mean it's just weird it's like planets uh there, there was, like, of course, Master Chief's in there, because, of course, he was. Uh, there's, like, some ship that's, like, eating another planet. And people are like, oh, what game could that be? Is that is that, uh, is that Starfield? Like, <laughs> is that Initiative's new project? And, like, people are looking for something here. Stop looking for something. This is, this is one of those ads that's just designed to get people talking. And this is something that you would see on, uh, you know, s Sports Night. This is something you're yeah. going to see on national television as an ad promoting the product. People just want to see the name Xbox and knowing that, oh, I know what an Xbox is. That's the video game console, right? Oh, the next Xbox is coming out? Okay, awesome. Well, and, and I know that uh, this, I know the trailer is going to be shown tonight uh, during the Viking Seahawks game um, on national TV, probably around halftime. So, you know, a lot of eyes are going to be on this. Um, I will definitely say. My big takeaway from at least the first video in this campaign is, man, it it hurt that Halo Infinite got delayed. And you can clearly tell that Halo was a big yeah. push, a big factor in their marketing campaign leading into these systems being launched. And yeah. like it, it, watching that video, I was just like, man, it sucks Halo got delayed. It's good. It's but, real good, but, I, but it sucks. What? I would argue that this type of advertisement is not for somebody who knows that Halo Infinite got delayed, right? Like, the general mass market does not know that Halo Infinite got delayed. Only gamers are really going to know that. What this is sh telling you is that, hey, remember Halo? A lot of people will be like, hell yeah, dude, I love Halo. Cool, it's on Xbox Series X. Is it on here at launch? No, it is not. But it is coming. Right? And that's what this type of advertisement attempts to do. Now, one thing that really caught me off guard about this, and I think this ad was planned way before... Oh, no, it, it, it clearly was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. I think it was written and, like, storyboarded earlier this year. But the 
considering the IP that they own now, given Bethesda and all of this, like, I imagine that Xbox advertising in the future is going to be insane, right? Like, Doom. Like, you just think about all the IP. Uh, you know, of course they have the Halo, the Gears, all. Like, they, they just own so much IP right now that they're going to be able to make advertisements that really like get people hyped about video games, right? Because they own a lot of new IPs and a lot of old classic IPs now that I think they're going to be able to tap into. But yeah, this, ad, I mean, I thought this was a cool ad, but I put it right up there with like Sony's weird ass advertisements that they do. They've been doing, I think they've got two so far and I expect for two more at least because they're really ramping up the marketing cycle. This, this month before release is crucial. Yeah. Everybody to is. Getting, they got to get yeah. people's eyes on this as soon as possible. Because this is where your non-gaming demographic is going to know about the thing and put it on their Christmas list, right? This is where you're going to get the people that only buy FIFA or only buy Madden that maybe don't follow video game news. They're like, oh, shit, the next Xbox is coming. I want to, you know, I got to play FIFA or Madden on the best looking thing. So they're going to want that. I got to have it. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, this, this ad didn't mention Game Pass. It didn't mention... Uh, any of the launch titles. It didn't mention smart delivery. It didn't mention anything that people in the gaming industry talk about. And what I would say are the the selling points of the of the console. I, I think I think though those videos and those promotional announcements are coming. I I, yeah. I, I, I really think they're going to be coming soon. Yeah. So. Uh, All right. Next I, uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I know your next story. I know that you are the most qualified to talk about this. And as I said, I had dinner right before this, and I have got to go use the restroom. Yes. So can you talk about this next story, and I will be right back. I guess, Seth, you're ghosting me to go use the bathroom. But just like this next story here, Ghost of Tsushima updates um, up on the list. It was a horrible segue. I am apologize to everybody who had to listen to that. Um, guys, we've got some updates here for Ghost of Tsushima watching the trailer here. I'm reading specifically from Darren Bridges over at the PlayStation blog here. Um... Ghost of Tsushima Legends and New Game Plus is coming out October 16th. Um, thank you so much for your support of Ghost of Tsushima. We are we are so appreciative of, to all of you who have shared your Platinum Trophy screenshot, photo mode captures, fox petting gifts, and beautiful fan art with us, as well as all of your thoughts about the game. We've been listening to your feedback and we're excited to release a major update for Ghost of Tsushima on October 16th, version 1.1. 1. 1. Um, this is a free update for all Ghost of Tsushima players. The update brings the launch of Ghost of Tsushima Legends, a brand new co-op multiplayer mode inspired by Japanese mythology, as well as exciting new updates and new game plus for our single player campaign. Um, if, if you, For people who don't remember, uh, Ghost of Tsushima was announced in August. It's a brand new online co-op multiplayer experience. Free update. You guys are watching the video B-roll for that where you get your different classes. You have raids in Ghost of Tsushima, which is pretty cool. Uh, the the blog details all the information on that. Um, you have survival missions, other features as well. Oh my god, I'm, I'm, I'm scrolling through here reading all this stuff. Uh, new Game Plus will also be enabled onto the game. Uh, there's a new merchant in New Game Plus um, where you can earn a different type of flower, which is pretty slick. As well as a bunch of other features that are coming to the game. Um... Seth, what do you think about the update in this trailer that they showed off showcasing some of the stuff? Especially, I think the big part of this update is Legends. Uh, it's really, really cool that you're a game that, you know, was sing completely single player. Now, all of a sudden, boom, we've got multiplayer components that we're adding in there for this. What do you, what, what do you, you haven't played the game yet, I don't think, but what do you think nope. about this update? I, I think this is amazing. I am really astonished that. Um, Sucker Punch is giving so much TLC to Ghost of Tsushima because it is so late in the PS4 generation and it was one of those games that was sold as a single player experience right like that's what that's what a lot of the PlayStation Core audience craves and so it's mm -hmm. really interesting to me that they're really going back in and adding features like cooperative and I've even heard like raid like you know raid like instances are coming and I'm like huh interesting like Generally, when you try and sell video games, you lead with that kind of stuff because that's, you know, that's what you look at games like Destiny and, and even like right now, Outriders, I know is a game that's coming out soon. It's like kind of loot shooter, right? Like that's what they're leading with is like, hey, that's a co-op experience, 
play with your friends, take down big bad guys. But like Ghost of Tsushima is kind of doing it backwards, which I think is really neat. I think I, I have a feeling that I'm going to regret not playing Ghost of Tsushima before the end of the year. However, big however, I think that when this game, when I play this game, I'm going to want to play it on PlayStation 5 because of this 60 frames per second patch. Because yeah, but I think they've confirmed that they are going to have a 60 did. frame patch. Yep, so they're they're bumping, like, the PlayStation 5 will get the patch to let it run up to 60 frames. Right now it's capped at 30, so, like, that is... So at this point, I'm kind of like, I'll just wait, like, because it's, you know, it's probably going to go on sale during Black Friday. Uh, yes, they'll do some kind of big winter I agree, sale. I agree, will. And uh, pick it up for, you know, 20, 30 bucks, whatever it may be. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is... Uh, what a great value. Like, what a great value. I know it sucks that video games are going up in price, but if Sony can deliver this kind of value post-purchase for all of their first-party studios, it's gonna be real I think awesome. people are going to be happy, yeah. Yeah, it'll be really, really cool. But no, um, October 16th, guys, that is this week. So if you ha own the game, get excited and be ready to play it. Uh, next story coming up here. <clears throat> I, this was cool because the, the, the tech in me was just like, ooh, this is super cool. But then the gamer in me was like, oh, you know, it's cool. Fine. I don't need to know. I, I'm kind of at that point where I don't need to know anymore about the PlayStation 5. But we got some information anyway here, guys. This is um, from the official site. We actually got a full breakdown of the PlayStation 5, an entire teardown of the system. Um, basically, I, I, this is like seven or eight minutes. I'm going to let this roll through as we're t discussing this. Um, we'll, we'll hit different highlights whenever we get to them. But Seth, what did you... First off, oh, let, let, let's... For all the video listeners, let's roll on back here. Boop. Seth, do you notice anything that's interesting about this specific shot? With him holding the PlayStation 5. This thing is huge, dude. <laughs> this thing is massive. It is an absolute unit. And like, okay, what's even worse is that, you know, this man is, is Japanese. Japanese men are generally like, you know, smaller. And, they tend to be know, smaller. They do. And so it's like even worse. Because it's like, <laughs> seeing this small, you know, uh, uh, considering the American average... He would be a small man by American standards, right? Next to this ginormous, it's huge, Cameron. It's huge. It's so big. Let's keep, let's continue on. It's, I, it's so easy. For, like, go ahead and just cue up the that's what she says because everything we're gonna talk about this thing is, it's it's so big. It's so huge. Like, where are we gonna fit that? Like, yes, just cue it up. Like, but like. Uh, I'm watching this video here. Of course, they're showing you the outsides here. Um, overall, I think like the teardown for the average consumer, it wasn't like doing easy stuff like changing the hard drive out, uh, which I, I guess honestly, or like upgrading the storage is going to be the big one for consumers. It wasn't mm -hmm. as bad as I thought because I was always curious, like, what the hell? How the hell do they do that? And we'll, we'll, we'll get to that part of the video here. It's actually, they're actually yeah. talking about the um, air vents and the exhaust port. Like, I will definitely say that having it that big will draw a lot of air in. And when he pulls out the blower, yeah. you're going to be like, oh, okay, that's I, that kind of makes sense. Maybe why it's so big so it could draw so much air in. Maybe that was one of their big feedbacks they got from the PlayStation 4 was that they were, I, that is really cool that you can store the screws in the base. That's I, awesome. I, I want to talk about this real quick because this is the kind of stuff that designers spend years discovering, right? Like yeah. you, you know that you're going to include a stand with it, right? Because once the engineering team decides what they want it to look like, you're going to include a stand from a design perspective, that would have been very risky, right? Like, Oh man, now that we're, now we're, not only are we overcomplicating the production, right? Because now there's another component we have to produce, but mm. also that's going to create an like d difficulty for users, right? What happens if the user loses the stand? Uh, what happened? You know, once the decision was made that this is going to screw in for its vertical horizon, you know, uh, orientation, like what do we do? What happens if they lose the screw? And the fact that they built the screw storage into the stand, and they also included a plug to plug the hole. On the, cool. the, the bottom, that is such a like a thoughtful 
foresight for our users because you know if they didn't include that plug cameron people would be on the you know they'd be on reddit complaining about it they're like oh man i, I wish you could plug this and then there would be this aftermarket pop-up of all these custom hole pluggers right like for, for 1995 you yeah, can get exactly. double plug for your hole in your ps5 man that sounds and horrible don't <laughs> believe me but like look at what's happened with like masks right like now that you can buy like the, the eyeglasses like clips onto your mask so you can like hang it around your neck like your you know like your grandma does with her glasses this right oh, here the i thought that, that was cool the, the, you can the, hook, like, you hook it where right where you see the symbols it's so like the listen mark cerny and his engineering team and the design team are just so this is top tier top tier talent in the industry building this thing it is so I, cool they're showing right now where you can actually pull the sides off manually just kind of slide them off I think it's very cool for that. That clearly hints that we're probably going to see a bunch of aftermarket like side vents that you could put on, or perhaps maybe Sony will sell their own branded side vents that users can easily put on. I, they said that about PlayStation Four also, and then it never happened. Yeah, so. that's like eh, we'll, we'll we'll see. Um, well, you Rudy, better believe like <laughs> artists will go crazy. Rutu in chat uh, says each PS Five comes with a roll of toilet paper. Um. This is, this is also very big. A lot of people have been really excited about this. So if you're watching the video here, it, they're notating the two dust catchers on each side of the PlayStation 5. So within the system where it pulls the air in, there are two dust catchers that are used to pull dust in and catch them so they're not trapped in the in the fan, in the big blower. I think that is pretty awesome. Considering like the fact that I have my PlayStation 4 Pro sitting under in my entertainment system and then all the dust and whatnot that gathers from there, I'm sure it's going to clog yeah. up a fan and this might help with like clogging fans and help preventing overheating, uh, which is also super, super dope to see. Yeah. I, this one was weird to me. <sighs> I, I, it sounds cool, but I don't know about vacuuming. I don't know that vacuuming was the best the best way to approach this because I like I have a vacuum cleaner, but I've never thought about using it on my console. Now the idea of taking my console and like air blowing it, very common technology thing. What are your mm -hmm. thoughts about this? Cause you can't really see where the air, like where the dust is coming from. You just basically, I guess you just stick your vacuum up to it and it just sucks it out. Is that right? Or yeah, it's, as we're seeing right here, the dust collected in the dust catcher can be vacuumed out through those two holes. So you just it's basically so weird. You can't see it. Like, generally, you see it. <clears throat> like, basically, you would stick your a little small vacuum tube or the little uh, mini vacs that you, and suck up the air. Yeah. Uh, moving on here, uh, they're showing the expansion slot. In the um, So this is where you're going to be able to put the M.2 PCI 4.0 slot in. Um, I Again, I like the fact that it's pretty easy. If you want to get to it, you take off that one side panel, and then there's one screw preventing you from open you just open that up and boom you slot it in so um, sorry go ahead no no i want to ask you this because sony opted to go with the i will we'll call it the 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 native input right it is a nvme input slot for nvme hard drive right mm -hmm. and the idea here is that you're going to be able to buy the, the the and now hard drives come on sticks right because that's Welcome to SSDs, right? And so you buy a stick of hard drive and you stick it in there. And I think it's very thoughtful that they accommodate different width or uh, sorry, lengths of that, right? Because the more, obviously, the more storage you have on there, the longer the stick's going to be, right? Well, it, so, um, it's not even more. Um, it's also, so not getting too in the, deep, in the weeds on tech here, but there are actually different sizes of M2 drives. Yeah, um, yeah. Not only just based on size, but also types and other factors as well. So here's my question. Because Microsoft went a very different approach by using a proprietary slot, right? It's it's a it's a normal interface point, but like the slot itself is proprietary for that little expansion card, right? Mm -hmm. This is something you could go on Amazon and buy. My big concern here is that I can go on Amazon and buy a stick of M2 SSD, you know, storage space right now. The problem is that most people, this is proven time and time again in the hard drive industry, most people are going to go with the cheapest option they can find for the input, right? When SSDs came out, 
you could buy an SSD for, you know, $300 that was like super, super fast and like super reliable. Mm -hmm. But if people, most people that are building computers nowadays that are putting SSDs, unless you're a gamer, like maxing out your rig, are just going to go for the, you know, 120, 130, like regular, you know, Samsung or, or, or other brand SSD. So what's going to happen when somebody buys an SSD card online that is not up to spec, right? And Sony's done, they said they're going to have this like pre-approval program, right? Where it's like your approved hard drive speeds. Mm -hmm. But like what happens when someone puts it in there and it's not fast enough or it's not good enough? Are they going to get an error message? And then now I've got to pull that stick out and return. I'm a little concerned about that experience versus say what you will about complaining about proprietary hardware. The fact that it's proprietary means that if I... If it fits, that means it was made to work that way, right? Versus letting you do it yourself and you kind of have mixed results on whether or not it works or not. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think one is better than the other? Do you foresee this um, being an issue with some people? Will not be a problem. And will the big reason is why is because, especially with the, <clears throat> I say effort very sparingly here, but the fact you have to pull that apart and put a screw in. Uh, this is clearly aimed at the, the, the people that are expanding storage on the PlayStation 5 are the people that know what they're doing and know about yeah. the information they're going like, you know, I, I know what I'm doing and even I wasn't sitting here. I still have my one terabyte drive on my PlayStation four pro. And I, you know, yes, I could easily upgrade it. Wasn't planning to try and do that anytime soon. And, and I yeah. think the average consumer isn't going to go this far in trying to upgrade it. And if they, you know, they'll probably traditionally just plug in a drive. I'm sure there will be a warning letting people know if they try and use an external USB drive that, hey, just so you know, you want to try and keep, just like Microsoft has been doing as well, if you plug in an external drive, you're, they're telling customers now, put use this drive for your backwards compatible games or your older games yeah. if you want the new high-speed stuff. you got to put it on this these type of drives, these new systems. Yeah. And even if those consumers decide they want to upgrade, um, I think... And I don't want this to sound bad, but like fear of like messing up their console. I think there's going to be yeah. a lot of resources there uh, that they're going to not only are they going to look towards and ask people who are in the know, but also hopefully, you know, hopefully, micro, uh, sorry, Sony has the information out there to let people know they're going to have that list. It'll probably be a support blog that says, hey, here are the approved list of SSDs that will reach the speeds necessary to run on the PlayStation 5. Here's a small list. Here are links to go get them. Um, and, yeah. and if they're going to do that, they're going to ask somebody who knows how to do it. At which point, you know, it, the, the person who knows what's going on will be like, oh, this isn't going to be fast enough. You know, if you yeah. want to upgrade it, here's how much it's going to cost you. You can put another M2 drive in here, but know that you're not going to be able to put any of the new PlayStation 5 games on this drive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not concerned about it. Uh, like, I, I think especially with the a little bit of effort that you have to do to actually get to that spot. This is not going to be something that your average, like, you know, mom and dad got little Jimmy a PlayStation 5, and, the you know, after six months, the first thing he's going to think of is like, I want to upgrade the storage to a, a PCI Express Gen, Gen 4, 5.5 gigabit per second, M2 drive. You know, that's not going to come out of his mouth. So uh, that's I'm a, that's why I'm not too concerned about it. Um do uh, oh, I'm sorry. I will, I will continue as we're talking about this. I, I completely mm -hmm. had the pause the whole time. Do is there a a best way? It no, I don't think so. I think to each his own. The uh, the Xbox Series S and Series X systems have the added benefit of um, flexibility and ease of use. Somebody can, you you know, little Ma, little Jimmy comes to the store and says, hey, I want to ex, uh, expand my storage space. Then guess what? All they have to say is like, here's a stick, yeah. put it in the back. It'll be numbered for you. Um, that being said, the PlayStation 5 has the benefit of consumer choice, which a lot of consumers want. They, you know, whatever the selection, uh, which I'm sure, again, it will be one or two at first and maybe expand as the year and two go on. Yeah and SSDs and M2 drives get to that speed. But j especially for your, I say, hardcore gamers, but your people that are looking and, you know, oh, I'm comfortable opening up my PS5 and putting in an M2 drive, even though it's very easy to do, uh, they're, th the fact that they have a choice to figure out what yeah. they want and, you know, if they want, maybe they don't want a terabyte 
a storage. Maybe they only want 500 gigabytes and it saves them an additional 100 bucks. Yeah. That, you know, yeah. that that's that flexibility there. So I will say this as you're running this video showing him going even deeper, right? This is the this is the, the even the further beyond. Of, even further <laughs> beyond. So this is the point of the PlayStation 5 that most people will never get to see. There are two things that stand out to me about this section. A, Mark Cerny and his team are geniuses. This is one of the most beautifully designed pieces of technology I've ever seen. Like, it is amazing uh -huh. what they have crammed into this, right? The second thing is, what the hell... The Sony that I had in my mind two years ago, right? The Sony that is... That would never allow crossplay. The Sony that is... Uh, you'll, you know... Like, just really up its own butt about being number one, right? Yeah. This is not something I would ever expect that Sony to do. To post a video detailing a breakdown okay. of their literal... Like, literally, the most important piece of technology that Sony is producing this year, right? They've, they've made a video that shows you the inside that is so outside of what I would expect Sony to do. And I'm talking about my not so great view of Sony from like two years ago. Yeah. And it tells like seeing this, it tells me that this is not, this is a new Sony. This is a different Sony. When Sony did all that stuff last year with like moving things over to the U S and changing up all their leadership, they were paving the road for this type of approach to communicating with customers and showcasing their technology. Right. They are, oh, here we go. They are, here we go. yeah, this they are really doing some special things and the, I love the fact that they are doing it for all the kids out there. Yeah, they're showing off stuff like liquid metal. They're for, showing for off all the, the, the Terminator fans. It has liquid metal. Ah! This, the T one thousand is inside your PlayStation Five. It's looking for Sarah Connor, and the only way they can get it out there <laughs> is to distribute it via the world's most popular video game console, right? So, uh, no, this is amazing. I, I, Cameron, I need you to skip real quick because I know we're we're getting crunched for time on uh, this story. Six minutes and nineteen seconds. Six nineteen. We're actually almost there. We actually we passed it. Look at this. No, look, not this one. Press play. Press play. Hold on, it's play. getting there. It's getting there. Okay. What, what am I looking for? Look at this. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> this is this is. Listen. That is. The I heat feel sink. like a warp hole should open up, and a time traveler should come through and kill this man and take that heat sink because that is belong that belongs in the year three thousand. <laughs> That is our great great grandkids heat sink, and they have put it in the PlayStation 5. Look at it. It's pretty big. All the Huge. It's supposed to have vapor chamber performance, so we'll see when yeah. we get the consoles in our hands there. Uh, but no, uh, kind of a cool little breakdown. Uh, like I said, I, I didn't expect a teardown of the system, but it was pretty cool to see nonetheless. Um, good on Sony. Thumbs up. Thumbs up, good sir. <clears throat> Next up, the uh, the last two stories we've got, guys, are pretty much like updates a on various games that are coming out the rest of the year. Uh, you know, they're very quick, but I wanted to at least start talking about them here. Um, first up, this story here, the medium is gets a trailer. Um, I believe they have a release date at the end of the trailer here, but I'm just this is a game I'm very excited for, and I didn't expect this game to come out this year. Um, but it is coming out this year. I believe December 10th is the name is the um, time this game is coming out. Um, any thoughts on this game, Seth? I know this big, this is one of the bigger Xbox titles that they've been showing off. Um, yeah, this for is the one series of the bigger X. ones. This is a series X exclusive game. So it is a true next gen game. One of the big features of this game is two worlds running simultaneously. So it's kind of got the silent hill thing going on where there's like the, our world and the dark world, right? And so you yep. can toggle between them at any time with no loads, which that's a very next-gen thing to do. <laughs> the interesting part about this is this was actually supposed to be a launch game, and this trailer was oh, kind really? of... This was confirming a delay that had been rumored. So uh, getting time. pushed out of that launch window is... I don't think is going to be a great situation for this game. I don't know. I'll need to fact-check this, but I if that game comes to Game Pass, I think it's okay. It's coming to Game Pass. Think, all those okay, games, these are all coming to Game Pass. So I think it's going to be fine. Uh, if that was a game that they were asking $70 for, I would 
be worried about it. But honestly, that'll be great for that game because that's going to be about a month after the game comes out. Mm-hmm. Or sorry, the console comes out. That's going to be when people are kind of looking for something new, right? Like that, they're going to have their teeth sunk way deep into Cyberpunk by that point. They're going to have, you know, Xbox fans are going to be playing Yakuza. They're going to be playing uh, lots of different launch titles for that console, right? But after about a month, people are going to be looking for something new, right? Especially coming up on all the the off time people tend to get around in the holidays. So, um, yeah, I think this is a, a great looking game. It's going to be spooky. It's going to be spooky, spooky. scary. Here's so. the other trailer. We've got a new update from Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate. Uh, this is basically the definitive version that's coming to next-gen systems. It's going to have your 4Ks and your 60 frames and all that fun stuff. Revealing brand new characters here first, if you're watching the video, of course, is Rain, which is pretty cool. I like his little hook that he's got that he uh, like comes out. It doesn't shoot it like Scorpion, but it's still pretty dope. And then, of course, I didn't... Melina, how the hell is she not in the game already? She was apparently a a fan requested one that she's been on. If you go to Ed Boon's Twitter account, apparently it is before this trailer, it was just full of put Melina in the game, put Melina in the game. Like, I, I just, it, the, it's so crazy how she hasn't been in the game yet yeah. since. Like, it, it, it's ridiculous. And then, of course, we're getting here to the final part of the trailer where they decided, hey, we got one more person to show you that's coming to this game. And what the hell? It's John Rambo. (laughs) Voiced by Sylvester Stallone himself. I want to make that very clear. He, the actual character who played Rambo, is voicing this character for the game. Um, Seth, what the (laughs) hell? Dude, it's Mortal Kombat, dude. Like, this is the game that normalized cutting people's heads in half and sticking the brain, pulling the brains out. Like, this game, Mortal Kombat is insanity. It is truly, like, doom levels of insanity. I think... Yeah, I mean... There was a tweet that I sent out, and it was was along the lines, I think it was, um, this is what... uh, Let me see if I find it here. Uh, Um, I think the tweet was like, this is... Mortal Kombat is now like Smash Brothers, but your dad gets to choose the characters. Yeah, basically, right? 80s, 80s action heroes. And I, I, I was dying. It was hilarious. Um, yeah. <laughs> who, who is left? What 80 action hero is left? Um, John McClane. Oh, well, I guess, is that 80s, he's not early 80s. 90s? He's not, he's, he'd be 90s. That would be, but I want you to know that if they put John McClane in Mortal Kombat, dude, <laughs> I would lose it. That would be amazing. Oh, my! His one of his fatalities would have to be a ho ho ho. Now I have a machine gun, right? Like elevator opening, right? It would have to be hundred percent. Um, and some also some cool news here, guys. Uh, some going gold tweets here. Uh, this first one coming from Insomniac Games with a lovely, awesome GIF. Thank um, you for including the gift. <laughs> Truly what made that, that tweet. Um, he, they tweet out uh, last week, uh, we are pleased to announce that Miles Morales PS5 and PS4 have gone gold and will be sneaking into your hearts globally on November 12th. So I, I, I still was under the impression that this game was going to get delayed. This clearly proves me wrong. Uh, this game, it is a now confirmed launch title here for PlayStation 5 um, coming into the holidays, which is great especially for people looking to get a, a reason to buy a PlayStation 5. Uh, what made one, you think this game was going to be delayed, dude? That game... I, I just... I, after everything else was getting delayed, after Halo got delayed, I, did, I didn't yeah. want to take any chances. Well, uh, Halo got delayed for... People didn't feel about Spider-Man the way they felt about Halo. <laughs> <laughs> but the other going gold here, which I am very excited for is that uh, yeah. cyberpunk 2077, they put this image up online and said cyberpunk 2077 has gone gold. See you in night city on November 19th. i um, very happy to hear that. Uh, I, know, I know there's still, there's a whole discussion with some people about some of the, you know, the crunch that they're working on in order to fix the patches and whatnot for this mm-hmm. game. But for now, very happy that we are at least going to be having... Cyberpunk will be in our hands on November 19th. Um, how excited are you for that, Seth? I'm so excited. The only the only thing that has given me pause about Cyberpunk is the fact that it is coming to consoles. Basically, it's coming to previous 
gen consoles and then it will be optimized for the new consoles later this year mm. i think that if that patch was ready that cyberpunk would be the standout gold standard i think that next gen consoles would sell better if cyberpunk was ready with next gen updates at this True. point i'm i mean a pr I, me personally, I'm going to be buying it on PC because I don't want to be dealing with that right now. That's I why want, I have it. I have yeah. it pre-ordered on PC as well. So, but if it was, if that next gen patch was coming to Xbox, I would buy it on Xbox, and I would honestly, I'd buy a Series X just to play that game at launch. But there's no urgency for me to get that because that patch isn't coming. But man, I at this point stop showing me. I don't need any more Night City wires. Just put that. Put it in my hand. Put it right here. <laughs> I'm with you. I 100% agree. Hand. He put it in my hand. Put it in my <laughs> I 100% agree with you. 100%. Um, guys, that's it for all the news and updates here for this week. Now it is time to get into our topic of the show. And the topic of the show tonight is backwards compatibility. It's a topic we've talked about a couple of times here. Um... But I, I I wanted to sit down and have a like a, a frank, real fun discussion about backwards compatibility, and it, it kind of brought up from this article that um, kind of popped up last week. Uh, you know, originally PlayStation Five had a big blog post, which I've also got here, uh, talking about you know how to get prepared for the next gen and what's going to happen with all your games and stuff. But uh, this particular support article detailing some of the backwards compatibility functions in PlayStation 4 games that will be working on PS5. And I'm going to read a little bit of this here uh, so everybody, especially people listening on the podcast, understand if you're worried about backwards compatibility, you could probably, you know, not worry anymore. But from their PlayStation's own support page, uh, the PS5 console is backwards compatible with the overwhelming majority of PS4 games. That means an amazing collection of thousands of PS4 games can be played on your PS5 console. The overwhelming majority of the 4,000 plus PS4 games are playable on PS5 consoles. Um, some bullet points they list here. Select PS4 games will benefit from PS5 consoles game boost, which may make PS4 games run at a, with a higher or smoother frame rate. Although many PS4 games are playable on PS5 consoles, some functionalities that were available on the PS4 console may not be available on PS5 consoles. In addition, some PS4 games may exhibit errors or unexpected behavior when played on PS5 consoles. This one, the first thing that kind of jumps out to me is something like, um, what is the game on PS5 with the kid and the bullying and the brush and he paints on the walls? Concrete Genie. Yes, thank you. Uh, that actually uses the gyroscope sensor in the PS4 controller. And I'm, I'm and curious. And I'm the Xbox guy. Yeah, brain fart. Dude, it's been a week. <laughs> and I'm curious to know, uh, that might be something that might have bumps in the road that they're talking about there. Um, before purchasing add-ons to play with your PS4 games on PS5 consoles, please try and boot to boot and play your PS4 games on your PS5 console to see if you are happy with the play experience. Please note, playing v PSVR games on a PS5 console requires a PSVR headset, a camera, and a PS5 PlayStation camera adapter. Always update your PS5 console to the latest version. Blah, blah. Here's the interesting stuff. <clears throat> PS4 only games. While the majority of PS4 games are playable on PS5 consoles, below is a list of PS4 games that are playable on PS4 only. On PlayStation Store, PS4 games that are not playable on the PS5 console will be marked with playable on PS4 only. Here's the list of that, those games. DWVR, Afro Samurai 2, Revenge of Kuma Volume 1, TT Isle of Man, Ride on the Edge 2, Just Deal With It, Shadow Complex Remastered, Robinson the Journey, We Sing, Hitman Go, Definitive Edition, Shadwin, Joe's Diner. This, that's it. This list is subject to change and excludes demos, media, and non-game applications. Um, they also go through a list of just kind of detailing uh, if you're playing with a disc, if you're playing digitally, how that's all going to work. Um, we'll have, of course... Um, you guys go to the support page, check out the uh, the information there. What 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 this this kind of brought me in thinking about backwards compatibility in and of itself. Like 
does backwards compatibility matter for gaming? And there are a lot of different facets. I think this there are a lot of different points in which it matters and it doesn't. And we, I know, Seth, we have talked about backwards compatibility in some extent. But now we get to have a full-on discussion about, about backwards compatibility. What are your... Number one, the easy question. Mm-hmm. Going into this generation of uh, the next-gen systems with the Series X and the PlayStation 5, how big do you think backwards compatibility matters to you as a gamer and to the entirety of you know the gaming industry or other people out there what do you what are your thoughts on it this one is very interesting to talk about because i do think that there's a me and then there's an industry and then there's a a hidden third side to this that is uh, i'm going to call perception right and okay. The me personally, I am the type of person I like new stuff. I like new games. I like new experiences. Right. Um, And so generally I'm going to push forward with trying out newer games. I think that for PlayStation in particular, they've made it pretty apparent that their priority for moving forward is new games. Right. They're Mm -hmm. not not saying that they don't care about their old games, but any work that they do with old games is going to be in service of a new game, right? Uh, I will go ahead, and I've said this on this podcast already, there's a reason that Spider-Man and Horizon was not included in that uh, uh, PlayStation Plus collection feature. That is because they are going to put those games in deluxe editions of... They've already done it with Spider-Man. They're going to do it with the deluxe edition of, of, of Forbidden West. And that's just... That is because they want to withhold those remasters or optimizations of those games to push a new game, right? That's the Mm -hmm. whole goal behind that. And, you know, I know a a lot of games media will, like, turn their nose up at that because, oh, we hate it. We're being sold the same game again. But at the end of the day, people are going to buy it, right? Like, that's just the reality. So I think where this really gets, there's two factors that really complicate this, the answer to this question. One is where we are as an industry because gaming is bigger than it's ever been three billion people on planet earth play video games right it is you think about amazing console generations the playstation 2 the nintendo wii Mm -hmm. we have the number of people playing games dwarfs that by a matter of tenfold right like the the wii didn't sell a lot compared to modern sales right like it sold about average of of what we would currently be expecting right that's because the industry has grown especially this year right so the backwards compatibility discussion is really going to boil down to one thing and one thing alone and that is the value that a customer sees in it right so a customer who gets a uh, playstation 5 who maybe already has a playstation 4 and has like 50 games for that playstation 4 are they going to get a lot of value out of that? Maybe, maybe not. If they own 50 games for the current console, they're very likely not going to be super concerned about playing those games because they are ready to buy 50 new games, right, for the next okay. console. I think where this really starts to, to, to come back, and I'm going to come back to the term I've been using, it's the term Xbox has been pushing, it comes back to accessibility. If you want to buy, like, if, if let's say a kid gets a a PlayStation 5 for Christmas, right? Parents really splurged and got him a PlayStation 5. And he goes in and he, you know, goes to GameStop with with 60 bucks to buy a game, right? He might find himself in a situation where, hey, I could buy two or three PlayStation 4 games that I never got to experience, right? And play those at better frame rates with, you know, better visual fidelity, right? So he may get more enjoyment out of that by having multiple games to choose from versus he may go in and be like, I want to get Demon's Souls. That is the game that I want to play, right? And I'm going to put my 60 bucks or 70 bucks down to buy that game, right? And so this is going to boil down, I think, to value. Where I think this really gets complicated, Cameron, is with Xbox and what they are doing. Because uh, without getting too deep into this, Um, part of, you said, I know a lot about marketing and I'll, I'll share with one of you, one of you, the most core tenets of marketing, 
Marketing is about making you think about the things we do really well, right? Coke wants you to think about how delicious Coke tastes, right? Mm -hmm. Apple wants you to think about how amazing their products feel to use or how seamless they feel to use, right? They want you to think about something. And so it's right. the same as, as, as I, I look at you, Cameron, and I say, uh, don't think about the, uh, the end of Get Out. But now you're thinking about the end of Get Out, right? So the minute I mention it, I bring it to reality. So the fact that Microsoft has said backwards compatibility is important to us and we think it's a core tenet of gaming. They've kind of planted their flag in the ground. Okay. If Sony doesn't respond, if Sony says, we don't agree with that, we think that new games, like if you remember back at the beginning of all of this little console bickering, Sony did the, we believe in console generations, right? And then they announced a bunch of their Keystone titles that they had kind of hinted might be PlayStation 5 only are now coming to PlayStation 4. Yeah. Bad look. Not a good look for Sony, right? Microsoft managed to do that without actually touch it like without saying the words playstation or sony right they created a conversation around backwards compatibility and this really started back when they when they finally figured out 360 compatibility right if you remember that announcement was met, met with like huge applause and so when you look at backwards compatibility statistically i don't think it's that big of a feature i think that a lot of people are looking for new gaming experiences however cameron if i make a promise to you and say Every PlayStation from this day moving forward is going to be able to play your PlayStation 4 games. Are you going to feel a little bit better about buying the PlayStation 6 when it inevitably comes out and the 7 and the 8? And then, you know, like, are you going to feel better about buying that? Knowing that, eh. like, imagine right now if your Nintendo Switch could play a GameCube game. Not so, This is a weird analogy, but, like, eh. what if it could do that? So for you, it's not that valuable, right? Shrug. It, and, and it... it <clears throat> Uh, a jump in here is like I've said it before on the podcast, and I my personal continued thoughts is that I think backwards compatibility is I don't want to reduce it by saying it's like a buzzword at certain times, oh, but it's dude. it's yeah it, it's, you're about to say something spicy <laughs> I can tell no it's it's a thing that is used at certain points in time to help generate hype and interest and that is on both sides and across the board all the way it you know nintendo's use of it is because they their first party lineup is so strong and they ve like they very much like all these fabled games from when we were kids especially when you're looking at the nes and snes time frames like they those are very much locked away like you can't just readily get those you can't just go out and find an nes or you couldn't beforehand, and just like, oh, I'm yeah. going to find the game and plug it in. It will cost you an arm and a leg. And I think backwards compatibility is a thing that matters at the at transitional... For gamers, yeah. it is a thing that matters at transitional points in generations. And that's it. Yeah. And, and I don't... I don't want to say mean that negatively, but I remember when we started having conversations about backwards compatibility a couple of years ago when Xbox started coming out and saying, hey, we, we're backwards compatible. All your 360 games now work on the Xbox One. Uh, people were like, yeah, I will 100% admit, I was, a, I was that person that was like, that's cool. Why? Like, from a gaming standpoint, why does it matter? Because what one of the comments you said, Seth, which I I am a hundred percent in agreement with, is that people people want the next big thing. The consumer they want the nice shiny thing, the shiny toy. Like look over here, they can jump in and show their friends or experience or play or whatnot. And the uh, announcing mid generation that hey we're backwards compatible with that generation that you were having fun with four or five, six years ago. Yeah. No offense to anyone. Utterly pointless in my opinion. That was okay. I, I will argue that I don't, this generation is not a generation that we can really use to, to guess or guide our future decisions because we saw the first three years of Microsoft's generation were so bad for them that they literally cleaned out their entire executive leadership and most of the team had to go through like a morality reconditioning, right? Like, I don't think it's fair. Like that was, if Phil had been driving from the beginning, that would have been a launch day discussion. Well, and, and, well, and this was like, it, it's, this isn't, this isn't a dig on Microsoft yeah. at all. This isn't a, this like, 
if Sony were rolling this out, I would be saying the same thing about Sony. Yeah. And, and, and the reason I'm saying this is because until I can see the general consumer, people listening to this, or yeah. general industry can show me that, oh no, we care about backwards compatibility, and we play 360 games and original Xbox games and PlayStation 2 games and PlayStation 1 games via backwards compatibility all the time, then it doesn't matter. And, and, and I, I say, I'm choosing my words carefully by saying specifically in mid-generation. Now that since we're getting to the end of this generation, we're moving into a new generation, this is the time when backwards compatibility matters. Everybody, you know, yes, there are these brand new shiny games that people are going to want to look for. They want to play these. They, you know, we want the God, yeah. want the God of Wars, we want the, the God Falls, we want the Halos and all that other stuff. But having that backwards compatibility make that transition for people that might be on the fence and hesitating about getting a new console when maybe they haven't finished their catalog of games before. If you were like, man, I have a, I've had an Xbox one, but I haven't beat gears five yet. Oh, guess what? Series X can play that game negatively for you. No problem. You go, boom. Yeah. It makes it very easy for me to jump over to the next, you know, the next generation, as opposed to if I, man, I want a PlayStation five, but I'm really trying to beat Joe's diner. What? It's only available on PlayStation four and it won't work on PlayStation five. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I want to, I think that pl backwards compatibility is more important than you think. I think that I'm not, and what you're saying about it being a, in transitional periods are correct, but I want you to imagine Cameron, a world where the Xbox one, sorry, the Xbox series S and X plays old games and the, pl you know, let's say they actually stuck by the thing they said and they like, we believe in generations. We're not doing backwards compatibility for PlayStation four. Mm -hmm. That 130 million console lead that you just had, you just risked it all. You put it all on the line. Because now, why should I, as a PlayStation gamer, think that you're going to care about any purchases that I make on your platform, right? Uh, here's a great... I think that Bloodborne still spanks most AAA titles that come out. As far as being a high level... Like, if, you if you're playing a... A Soulsborne game, like if you're playing Mortal Shell, I promise you Bloodborne is better than Mortal Shell. I promise you Bloodborne is better than The Surge, right? So the Ooh, fact the that Surge Bloodborne is cut. playable, well, yeah, but like the the fact that Bloodborne is going to be playable on PlayStation Five is more exciting to a lot of Soulsborne fans than get you know like oh like oh you know well i'm not gonna say demon souls because demon souls is pretty fucking high but the <laughs> like the idea of like oh we're gonna put out dark souls 3 remastered edition and it's gonna be optimized for you know like uh, and you can rebuy the game because uh, here's the thing i'll tell you cameron if you say that backwards compatibility doesn't matter then stop complaining about skyrim getting re-released stop complaining about nintendo making deluxe editions of everything that is literally that industry is built around the fact that backwards compatibility is not "quote unquote" important. Well, it's that's, important. That, that's a good point. I'm like, we actually, that's a good point to talk to about there. But like I say, like I, my, I guess my point is like for for gamers, <clears throat> backwards compatibility doesn't matter until the generational shift happens, and that's why, like the, the example you're talking about there, like we're yeah. getting towards the end of the generation. A hundred percent money. Like they're not corporations are not going to just cut off 50, 100 million, 200 million users that are currently on their ecosystem, at least not right away. They're going to give you that those two to three years at the beginning of a generational cycle yeah. is that time for people to slowly migrate because uh, consumers are conditioned that eventually yeah. maybe they get a sale or whatnot. Eventually it's going to be a point where games will no longer be made for that old platform. Period. Like, yeah. It's old tech. That's how technology moves. Continue on. Can I ask you a question? I want to ask you a question real quick. Okay. I want to hit you with a hypothetical. Mm. Imagine Microsoft had a launch title for the Series X that is called Gears of War Dom. Right? And it is a spinoff Gears of War game that follows the early career of Dom in the gears world right before he meets marcus or whatever right and in that game they say we are actually going to include the up 120 frames 4k fully optimized for series x version of gears 5 right mm -hmm. do you think that people would respond well to that that there's like a game and then another game bottled in with it that's both 
made for the next gen, right? And they're kind of like they're they're using this new game for a franchise that you love as a kind of a a carrier for the remaster of the game that m probably a lot of people would want to play, right? Like that's like yeah, a new version of Gears is awesome, but like I also want to see what Gears Five would look like in the the mega hype zone. And I ask you, do you want to play that? I, you don't have to answer because it's a rhetorical question, but that's what's happening with Spider-Man, right? Yep. Spider-Man is, here's a cool spinoff game that's going to be dope. Here is a remaster of the game that everybody loves. It's the best-selling PlayStation game of all time. And they had to literally put up a blog post to clarify how you're able to buy that remastered version, right? Microsoft is not doing that. They are saying, plop in your copy of Spider-Man, and it runs it. We're, we're releasing that. And the reason they're able to do that is because they're not trying to sell you Spider-Man again. They're trying to keep you subscribed to Game Pass, right? So I think this question that you're coming down to, and this is and this is not an episode of Console Wars, so let's not get into it, but <laughs> the difference in business models between Xbox and Sony means that Microsoft has to care about backwards compatibility because if they do... That means that their library is bigger. That means there's more value. There are going to be people, Cameron, who buy an Xbox Series X this holiday who have not had an Xbox since the 360. Yep, right? 100%. And so these people are going to be looking for games to play. Well, guess what? Game Pass already has them all on there, right? Same goes for PlayStation. There are going to be people who are picking up PlayStation 5 that maybe never owned a uh, PlayStation 4, or maybe this is their first gaming console. And... They're going to be looking for games to play. If you don't have backwards compatibility, then you're starting from a pebble and you have to rebuild the snowball down the hill, right? Yeah. Versus if you lead with this. And honestly, it used to make sense because the way, because games were advancing so quickly, we were moving from cartridge to disc, from disc to Blu-ray, right? Like there were so many like physical gaps that were being leapt over. That's not the case anymore. The games are not that far off from their PC counterparts. They're not, you know, there's no difference between a PlayStation 4 and a PlayStation 5 other than it's real fast on the hard drive front and there's a lot of GPU power. So there's no reason for them to do that. Now, can you imagine if Sony said, nope, PlayStation 5 is not backwards compatible, compatible. So they put this 130 million console lead on the line and then someone gets it. Of course, someone hacks it and mods it to play backwards compatible games. And then people are like, wow, they could have done it. They just flipped the switch to make it where you can't. And do you remember the early Fortnite crossplay debacle? Where they were like, oh, it's not possible. Oh, so yes. Like, it's yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. possible. And then it accidentally gets enabled. <laughs> and then next thing you know, everyone is like, no, it's actually pretty easy to do. And eventually the, the tide is just too great. And even their massive console lead was not able to, to give them the leverage they needed to block that, right? And so... At this point, I think whether or not backwards compatibility is important, it is objectively, and this is that third option I said, is from a perception re like area, it is important because it provides you with a confidence in your purchase. Because, And you think I'm joking, but there are several threads that I have read that are hundreds of comments long about people being like, man, I really regret buying all my games on PlayStation 4. Before, now, I think this blog post helped a lot, but there are a lot of people who are like, man, I really should have won Xbox last generation. They've been killing it. like, And that is the kind of, like, again, that is the type well, of, and, like... And, 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 again, I yeah. I don't have a problem with backwards compatibility. I, it just, I, Sounds like you do, though. My The issues I have with backwards compatibility... I Actually, no, I don't have any issues with backwards compatibility. I... <clears throat> my problem was... The, like, me looking at it, I see clear, like, this, the generational leap, yes. Like, I, I, I have no qualms, I'm not arguing with anybody that. You can't, backwards listen, compatibility. you stop dragging Xbox through the first three I'm years not, of the Xbox One. Board. I'm not. All right, that I'm was the, them trying to win back some goodwill from the I fans. don't, I, I'm not even talking about Xbox. I, I'm, like, I'm, I'm using them as an example just to talk about, like, the entire history of, of backwards compatibility from every time we hit a generation. It was like, people, consumers, from what I've seen, care about backwards compatibility when the generational shift happens, usually about the last yeah. year before the new console comes out and then the first two or three years after that. And then in those kind of peaks and valleys, like, the average general consumer generally doesn't care. 
And like I don't have, I, I do not have a problem with backwards compatibility. I think it's cool when you have that nostalgic feel, and you know you don't have to go outside and try and find a Super NES to and, and the game yeah. cartridge to try and play this game all over again. Now you do in some cases, depending on how far removed you are. But I digress. It's not the point. Yeah. Like, the, I, but I also think there are some fringe cases of like, you know, I want to plop in an old game and enjoy it, right? Like maybe I want to try and play. Uh, I'm trying to think of, uh, like, I think Red Dead Redemption was one. A lot of people wanted to play Red Dead Redemption right before Red Dead Redemption 2 came out, remember? And even, they even made a big deal when they did the backwards compatibility patch for that because they did, like, the 4K up res. It was optimized for yeah. Series X or R1X, rem remember? And that's an example, I think, of, like, when people get excited, especially with how many sequels we have, right? Like, so many franchises we have building on each other. Um people like to sometimes go back and, and, enjoy, and enjoy that them. thing. I, yeah. I own a DVD copy of the unedited theatrical releases of Star Wars. It's the only way I can watch the theatrical releases, the Sarlacc that didn't have the beak, right? So when I want to go back and watch the Spike Hole version of Return of the Jedi, I can pop my DVD that I bought over 10 years ago into my 4K Blu-ray player, and it and still plays. It. Yeah. That's no, and cool. I mean, you're hitting on another point I want to talk about too. Like the, but like it just, it, I don't even know why I feel like I'm trying to stutter or anything like that. Like they, my thinking and just my thought is that like when it's th year three to five of the uh, you know Series X's or the PlayStation Five's life cycle, people the the large majority of people are not going to be concerned about what they could have played in the PS4 Xbox One generation. They're going to be concerned about what is the next when is Halo 7 coming out? When, when is but the next know, game coming out? And what's the I, next new shiny IP thing that is available to use? And I don't I don't think hey, please again this is my opinion and I'm not Trying to make it, I'm not, I am not harping on backwards compatibility at, at all. It's just an interesting thing that I've noted and seen, especially mm -hmm. when, like, well, the, the big thing about this is, like, when that big, you know, me looking at that huge announcement a couple of years ago when Xbox did showcase and, like, boom, we got backwards compatible. Like, three or four years ago, I was like, okay, thumbs up. That's awesome. It's cool, yeah. but it didn't move the needle a whole lot for me. Now we're getting to, you know, boom, the fact that Xbox is saying, boom, you know, all all your games from all these generations are going to be able to play. All the PlayStation saying, hey, over over 4,000 plus of the PlayStation 4 library is going to be playable. I'm like, yeah. yes, this is awesome. This makes it a lot easier for people tra to transition. And it's super, super good to see that, especially around the new generation. I mean, look, I've got... I, I went to our local little hobby game store in town and bought a PlayStation 1 just to play Vagrant Story because they had Vagrant Story in a PS1 yeah. and I dusted off my 8 meg uh, 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 memory card. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to play Vagrant Story again. It's so super awesome. Um, but no, I don't have a problem with backwards compatibility. It's just, I think for me, psycholo psychologically, it's just so very interesting to see that kind of how yes. we those valleys and troughs of when we care about backwards compatibility as an entire consumer market, I guess. Thank you for say. saying that. I'm, I'm <laughs> jumping in here because you said it from the psychology perspective, right? It is, a, I would say that it is over 90% psychology. It is. Uh, it is, 100%. If I, tell, if I tell you, Cameron, that, that you know, this... Like, you think about the hype that people had for this rumor going back a while that, like, the PlayStation 5 was going to be backwards compatible all the way to PS1, right? Mm -hmm. How many people do you think are going to pull out a copy of Parappa the Rapper and play it if they had announced that? Very few. However, would people who owned a copy of PlayStation 1's Parappa the Rapper lose their freaking mind if they knew that they would be able to put it into their PlayStation 5 and play it? Yes. They would have, that would have been a hype moment. And so a lot of it is psychology. And say what you will, the reason we've spent the last nine months getting hyped for these next-gen consoles is because one tiny decision could completely alter the course of console gaming. Don't believe me? 
let's go rewatch 2013's Xbox press conference. One tiny decision, one 70 second video on PlayStation's YouTube channel, oh, randomly geez, tweeted, oh could change the entire I feel, outlook, right? I feel like you're haunted by this video. <laughs> Xbox is, Xbox is. So, and boy, let me tell you about the sad attempts at Xbox UK specifically. It is not the main branch. Xbox UK was being real petty this week with some of their bullshit, but I digress. Uh, oh. Most of those tweets got deleted. But what I'm saying is that people want to feel that confidence when they make a purchase, right? And Indeed. confidence comes in, yeah, just yeah, it's just like insurance. You don't want to use insurance, but you want to know that insurance has got your back, right? You don't want to use your seatbelt, but you want to know that if someone hits you from behind, the seatbelt's going to save your life, right? That is the same thing. You don't necessarily want to play Bloodborne today in the year of our Lord 2020, especially considering it has to do with a plague that decimated <laughs> a, a village, right? Like, you don't necessarily want to relive that, but I can promise you that in five years, Bloodborne will be just as good of a game as it was when it came out in 2015 or 2014. And it's cool that you'll be able to play it on a piece of hardware that you can go buy. Yeah. Because what you see a lot of times, Cameron, this has happened recently with the 3DS. Remember, the 3DS was marked end of life. And really? so now I'm giving you, I'm saying, hey, guess what, Cameron? Do you own a 3DS? Well, I do. <laughs> it may be one year. It may be three years. It may be five years. But when that 3DS dies... Your entire collection of 3DS games are unplayable unless you can find another 3DS. Does that make you sad? Yes. Will you ever play another one of those 3DS games? Probably not, but you're still sad. And when you're sad, you are less likely to buy a new thing from that person, right? And and this so. is why uh, Ruru2 in chat says this is why PC gaming is far superior. This brings me to the second, the second part of this coin and why if, out of all the comments and stuff that you've heard me say in the first part yeah. of this, if you were to ask me the correct, the, the, the direct question, Cameron, does backwards compatibility matter? I would tell you yes. If by nothing else from that conversation, the big reason backwards compatibility does matter is preserving our history in gaming. Yeah. Like the 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 fact that you you know, I, I don't the I don't think the average consumer is sitting there thinking, man, I can't wait to play Crimson Skies on my Xbox Series X because it's backwards compatible. Like the, I could probably count on my hands the few amount of people that actually are saying that in their mind. But the fact that we can do that and preserve preserve that game in you know, in that context of like this is how this game played, however many years ago, as opposed to you answering the question just like I had to answer like, crap, I want to play Vagrant Story. Now I've got to, it's really hard to find a copy of that game. I got to go try and find that game and get lucky. And now I got to find a PlayStation One and actually get the original hardware to do that. It is very convenient to do that, and it really showcases, especially for people that didn't get to play. Or wasn't maybe alive back then in those games? Like, how, how, how far we've come from yeah. back in the original Xbox to the Xbox Series X is a big thing. Now, and I, I, I'll definitely say that doesn't discount the effort of, like, trying to find the old older consoles and the older games themselves. Because those are, you're, like... This is the hardware of the time. The PlayStation, is. this is the hardware of 1997. Yeah. And this is the game style and everything. We. This is why we were so limited and why we... Like, I, I love going on YouTube and watching these videos of developers talking about, like, especially one of my favorite games of all time, Final Fantasy VII. Of course, I had to bring it up. The, like... We here we only could do certain amount of things because we were limited by the hardware, like music. In order to save memory space, instead of doing a full orchestral soundtrack, we did like this mini thing on the PlayStation, so that way we would have enough space to put on these full art backdrops for Final Fantasy VII. You know, when for Pokemon, they had to. Um, they had memory issues because I think Iwata-san wanted to put the original 
game from red and blue into gold and silver. So after you beat gold and silver, guess what? Now Kanto region opened and now you can play through Kanto. And um, they had to figure out like the limitations on the Game Boy that they could actually do to do that. And so like, I think, and, and, and that's why it's so hard and I feel so bad. And, and I am very appreciative of stores like Rocket City Arcade and other mom and pop shops that let you trade in older consoles and you can go, those are great places to find history. Cause like you, Seth, you probably know, but other people may not, you may not understand how excited I was that I walk into Rocket City Arcade and there's a PS1 system, fully functional, and I'm like, dude, I gotta get that. And then I go up to the front desk and there's a copy of Vagrant Story, which you probably have to pay 80 or 90 bucks for online if you want to find a copy, um, is only 30 bucks. I'm like, yes, the money, here, take my card, give me the game immediately. Like, yeah. that is really cool. And, and, and it, you know, that I, I'm glad I have it now because I have that historical context. I have all these systems right here. And there's a PS Vita. There's a PSP. There's a 3DS. All right. Like, you're just flexing now. You're just flexing. <laughs> no, but like. Are you going to tell us about the time you played Overwatch three years before everyone else did? Not in this episode. Did they um, give you a PlayStation? <laughs> did they give you your third PlayStation Vita when you were at BlizzCon? <laughs> Um, not at BlizzCon. Did, it was, did it was Mike Morheim hand it to you personally as you were Cor having coffee with him? Cor Corey, often do? Corey Barlog at oh, PAX okay. South handed it to me while I was in line to play um, yeah, yeah. Days Gone. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what it was. You're right. You but like, right. no, the... I think that is the big reason for me. Like, my thought process that backwards compatibility matters is, yes, we are a young industry. You know, we've only been... A, the gaming as it is now, it's only been around for, what, 40, 50 years. We're young compared to a lot of other hobbies out there. But, and it's it's something that even, like, a lot of historical gaming people are, are trying to figure out. It's like, how are we preserving our gaming Joe's culture Diner. in history? How are we preserving how, Joe's how, Diner? How are we preserving Joe's Diner? And backwards compatibility, with the exception of Joe's Diner, is the way that they're doing that. And I think that's why it's very valuable that we continue to support and have that. I, I love the yeah. fact that my, Microsoft has figured out that way, even by emulation, I don't yeah. uh, to be able to play their entire history from start of Xbox to current Xbox. You can have the Series X and play your entire system of games. I think that's very awesome to see. Yeah. And I think that is one of the big reasons that backwards compatibility does in fact matter. And should matter. It really misled me because I thought you were really going against backwards compatibility, no. and then you pulled the old 180 on me. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You the old devil's advocate on me. No, I just uh, yeah. I mean, at this good. point, I would say it is a it is a necessity for consoles to have it because it is just it's one of those things that people just want to know. They want to be they want to feel good about it, and the way you make people feel good is yeah, you have those hype moments. Now. Yeah, Microsoft owns 23 studios now. They're ready to honk out some new games, dude. Like, buckle up. New games are coming. But right now, it is it is all about making sure this transition goes smoothly. Because we've said this before. I'll say it again. This is probably one of the most critical points in console gaming that we have ever had. This is Microsoft finally launching a console outside the shadow of 2013. It's them... This is finally. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's, this is them. This is finally where we see all the cards on the table from both Sony and Microsoft about what they think is important to gaming. Right. Fortunately, they both agree on some things like SSD speeds and things like that. They disagree on other things like uh, subscription game, you know, subscription game models and things like that. So it's going to be very interesting to see over the next two to three to maybe even five years how we continue to see a divergence in the way that games are made for each platform and how also how these these uh platforms converge with things like cross play becoming more and more a thing and different types of inputs becoming more acceptable with the mm -hmm. everything from keyboard mouse support on console to the accessibility controller which allows people to play games who would never be able to play a game 
they might be able to play on PC if they could figure out how to configure their accessibility controller using third party software on the PC. But now you can just plug it into the, the console and you get that same plug and play ease, but with an access, like that's the level we are moving into a world where half the human population plays video games. That includes non-English speakers. That includes uh, handicapped individuals or folks who don't have full accessibility or range of motion. That includes people who can afford new consoles every six months. And that includes people who can't afford a console, but once every 10 years, right? What we're seeing right now is gaming becoming so much more than just new $60 titles. It is now, what's the current season of Fortnite Apex look like? What's going, what events going on in Genshin Impact? You know, what, what, but Rurutu in chat says, but they play on mobile phones. I, I mean, I play, I mean, you can play Genshin Impact. I was sitting at Mellow Mushroom tonight playing Genshin Impact on my mobile phone. Does that mean that I only play on my mobile phone? No, I play it on the PC. No, no, no. No, I play on the PC, but like mobile phones give you access to things when you would normally not have access to them. Mm -hmm. So before you write off anyone who plays games on a phone, recognize that you probably play games on a phone and I bet you would rather play Genshin Impact than Candy Crush. You know, like you probably played Candy Crush because it's the only thing that would play on your phone. What if I told you Doom Eternal runs on your phone now? You know, what if I told you that Genshin Impact runs on your phone? Like you can have that same quality experience. If you have an Android phone, then it does. Yeah, and imagine someone who plays Genshin Impact on their phone and then all of a sudden they're like, man, I love playing Genshin Impact. I play it like, you know, 40 hours a week. I play it so much. I'm always playing it. Oh shit, there's a there's a version on PlayStation? And all of a sudden you've created a PlayStation owner that maybe would never have bought the console because the game they played was not on it. But now you found out, oh, it's on mobile and PlayStation. Well, that's a bad example because there's no cross progression. Yeah. What I'm saying is that don't just write off people that play games on phones because each person who only plays games on their phone <laughs> is just one decision away from playing games on a console. And same way for PC, right? Like the, the, any console owner is one decision away from becoming a PC gamer. And any PC gamer is one crashed system and $3,000 worth of repair bills away from buying a Series X because they're tired of paying so much for their components and they're tired of graphics cards being inflated because of Bitcoin miners or whatever oh, else. Man. Or Sound a little angry. Sound a little well, I'm just saying, like, like, what if you... Like, there comes a time when you sit down and, yes, your PC is an awesome, amazing machine that can play so many games and whatnot. But if it goes out, it costs a lot of money to re- to rebuild and to upgrade. And there's going to be someone out there that's like, you know what? The main reason I started playing on PC is because I could put the SSD in there. The PS5 has that. The Series X has that. It's half the price of just a graphics card, you know, and it plays all the games on it. Like, it's at this point, it is about accessibility. And this goes to this goes to backwards compatibility. It's about making games accessible. The most number of games accessible to the most number of people. And that is where we are right now. Like, yes, the new things are coming. That's what happens in the middle of your generations as you get your your horizons, your God of Wars, your uh you know, Halo Infinites are coming up. Those big title games that come out in the middle are always in the middle. But in between you want people to consider upgrading or adjusting their gaming habits to something new. It's all about accessibility. It really is about accessibility. So end rant for me. There you go. Um, but guys, let us know. What do you think does backwards compatibility matter to you? Would you guys like to see more efforts, especially in the console industry, um, kind of preserving backwards compatibility and preserving our, gaming history uh let us know over at our social media um outlets there again i am at rocket punch go over on twitter seth is at darth turner over on twitter as well let us know what you guys think here after listening to this episode but guys that's it for episode 26 of the rocket punch show um where that is a wrap we're we're, we're done right episode. <laughs> uh very fun conversations that we had i figured it would be um and it, it it slowly builds the hype as we get closer and closer and closer we are it's 11th right now as of this recording sure. we are a month away from having both next gen systems in our homes 
Well, we're a month away from Xbox. Yeah. We're a month and two days away from PlayStation. So. Month and one day. This is the 12th. Today's well, the 11th. There are 31 days in October, Mr. Mr. So, Calendar so, so, Man. I, I, and Will I was going that man. <laughs> semantics. All pure semantics. Okay. Um, but... Guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, if you are a Twitch subscriber or a Patreon subscriber, uh, don't worry. We've got the post show coming up for you here in just a minute. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for listening, tuning into the show. We always appreciate you guys' support. We got a lot. Of, I got a lot of cool events and stuff planned, so definitely follow us on social media so you guys are tuned in for that. Um, but until next time, guys, good night and good game. Mm-hmm.